five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, we've heard a lot today about the procedural safeguards, independent code review, server locations, and the corporate independence between ByteDance and the CCP. But I think there's something else a little more telling. You know, when you were asked about Chinese censorship, you pivoted immediately to drug use in Singapore. You have absolutely tied yourself in knots to avoid criticizing the CP CCP's treatment of the Uyghur population. And I think it begs, the un it begs the first question, before we ever get to Project Texas, which I'll get to in a section. If the CCP demanded that ByteDance hand over all of the data that they had on, user, on US users in their possession, and ByteDance refused, I wonder what would happen. I wonder if Jack Ma might have an opinion on that, and I wonder if he'd be allowed to give it. But let's talk about Project Texas for a second. Project Texas envisions a new US-based TikTok subsidiary. You have stated that this arrangement is unprecedented. I'd argue the reason it's unprecedented is because it requires continual oversight and monitoring by the US of a private business because it poses a national security threat. The new subsidiary's board would report to and be approved by CFIUS. CFIUS will also specify hiring requirements as well as interact with Oracle as it performs its data role. That is an extraordinary corporate governance structure. I have questions whether it complies with corporate law and fiduciary, fiduciary duty to shareholders. Yet the core concern is that the, the pro, proposes unparalleled integration with the US government with a private company, which will require significant government resources. All of that to allow a continued operation of a social media platform that has serious national security implications. And CFIUS's workloads already dramatically increased in recent years, with a 30% increase in declarations and a 45% increase in joint voluntary notices. And there's bipartisan consensus that CFIUS needs to be expanded as we speak. The only, Mr. Chu, can you identify any a similar corporate arrangement that requires federal government to expand such resources to monitor an alleged data privacy and national security risk? Congressman, I'm not an expert on this matter. I believe that there are certain similar arrangements, but I, I'm not the expert on this matter. Well, the only one I could find was the UK created the Huawei Cybersecurity Evaluation Center in 2010 to assess Huawei's tech and to detect malicious activity and guard UK's networks. That's worked so well that the United Kingdom is now planning on kicking Huawei out of Great Britain. You stated that TikTok has invested $1.5 billion in Project Texas. Are you aware of any discussions or proposals that entail TikTok, that entail TikTok funding or offsetting the costs of CFIUS role? Uh, those discussions are, uh, I need to get back on you on the specifics, but I can tell you, yes, we did spend appro approximately one and a half billion US dollars on our side. You spent one and a half billion dollars on Project Texas. But do you have any, I mean, you agree that if CFIUS takes on this role, they're going to need a massive influx of dollars in human resources, right? I cannot speak on behalf of CFIUS, Congressman. Should the U.S. government expend such resources to create this extraordinary arrangement for TikTok, especially considering alleged data privacy and national security risks? Congressman, I cannot speak on behalf of the United States. Well, but States. Project Texas doesn't work without CFIUS. Right? Project, Tex Project, Cif Project Texas, as you guys have proposed it, does not work without CFIUS involvement. The idea behind Project Texas is the firewall of U.S. user data. Make sure it's stored by an American company overseen by American personnel. And we will invite third-party monitors to, to monitor this. So that, in essence, in, at least as far as I know, is the majority of the cost. Because it will rely on not just us building the infrastructure, but us you know, finding and hiring these third-party monitors who are vetted to come in and monitor this structure. You talked earlier about the uh, shareholders' uh, ownership of TikTok, and you said 60% is global investors, 20% is employees, and 20% is original founders. Are all those voting shares the same? Uh, no, the founder has uh, weighted voting rights, as is common in our industry. So do you, as far as a voting block of share of zoned in by dance, do you know if the Chinese Communist Party, not Chinese government, Communist Party officials, the Chinese Communist Party, do you know what their percentage of the actual voting block share of, of by dance is? The uh, so Chinese the, Communist Party doesn't have voting rights in by dance. Chinese Communist Party members is a different question. I, do the founders control the voting block of ByteDance's shares? I do know that the founder himself is not a member of the, the Communist Party, but we don't know the political affiliation of our employees because that's not something we ask. 
Does the Chinese government know the political affiliation of their Chinese citizens? I cannot answer that question on their behalf. I yield back.